Well, good evening, everyone. It's uh, 723 on a Thursday night. We're here in Indianapolis at the Fat Heads Eyewear Studio. And uh, joining me again, uh, my partner in crime on all of this uh, through the years, uh, Kyle Dagger from Grip Motorsports. Kyle, kind of a bittersweet night tonight with this episode. Yeah, um, you know, it's going to be our last Rumble Mumble for a while, but uh, it's it's cool that we've kept this up for this long and, and kind of cool that you guys kept tuning in and we we're uh, allowed to do this for this long. Yeah, we're looking forward to uh, getting back into full gear come September. And uh, we had such success with the uh, Mel and Don Kenyon piece that uh, we're going to do some travels this summer, go out into the garage and uh, introduce to uh, people uh, our Rumble Racers, uh, kind of behind the scene type thing. Yeah, we, we definitely have some special features coming along. Um, you know, like you said, that, that Kenyan piece was pretty amazing. Um, I'm shocked with how, how well it blew up and um, excited for uh, some of the ones in the future. Well, tonight we're going to wrap it up uh, very interestingly. I think that's a proper grammar. <laughs> uh, our youngest guest ever. We had Jacob Boxa last year, but now we're going down just a little bit further to uh, 11 years old. And uh, joining us tonight is uh, Austin Gear and his mom and dad coming to us from Orient, Ohio. Hey, gang, how are you doing? Good. Hello. Good. How are you? Good. Hey, Austin, uh, tell us a little bit about your racing career, uh, how you got started in quarter midgets and uh, some of the uh, stories that you can tell us on some of your favorite wins and stuff like that. Part about getting started, I don't really know. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, you were pretty young, like about four years old, I think, at the hog barn or something like that, maybe. Yeah, when he was four years old, we took him to the hog barn to watch uh, Taylor Nyberg race. Um, I'm real good friends with her dad, and Austin really liked it. So later that summer, um, we took him to an arrive and drive and let him practice in one of the club cars. Um, and then for his fifth birthday, we bought him his first race car. Well, Kyle, I know you were looking at me kind of stupid when I said the hog barn, and I, I guess that's uh, affectionately. We race at the Ohio Expo Center, the Ohio State Fairgrounds in the O'Neill Building, but during the fair, it's the swine building, so it's become known as the hog barn. But uh, <laughs> what a disappointing year. You, you know, we lose the rumble, and then uh, you and your wife, Mary Jo, uh, are so involved with the Buckeye Quarter Midget Racing Association, and the hog barn is your winter base, and this year no racing no unfortunately COVID got the best of us this year um, we for safety concerns and some state uh, regulations we had to cancel our what would be our 64th annual uh, Columbus Indoor Winter Nationals so I'm I'm kind of curious Larry always tells me I I, I grew up racing carts um so i wasn't really around quarter midgets but larry always tells me there's a clear divide clear divide between regular quarter midget clubs and how quarter midgets are ran at the rumble so i want to get your guys's perspective on on those differences uh yeah there's some the major differences are like if one of the kids chains pop off or you uh go dead on the track um, we can push the kids off and they get courtesy laps uh, to fix their car. Uh, depending on the track or where we're at, it's anywhere from three to five laps once the lineup is set. Um, and it's a little bit more of a laid back atmosphere um, for quarter midgets at our, at our club races than it is at the Rumble. At the Rumble, it's when it's time to go, it's time to go. Austin, you uh, race a lot on uh... I guess we'll refer to it as the standard size quarter midget oval. Uh, you get to the rumble and it's like twice as big and twice as fast. What did you think the first time you went racing at Fort Wayne on the rumble track? Um, definitely a little scared. And I'm not used to holding the gas down that long. So that, that, that was one of the things that was definitely a little different about it. But you have definitely got comfortable <laughs> there and confident because you picked up a few wins here the last couple of years. Yes. 
Mom, I have to ask you, uh, you know, Austin just said maybe he's a little bit scared out there. What does mom <laughs> say when uh, you look out there and you see those kids flat foot and they're going twice as fast as they normally do? Well, at the Rumble, it definitely was a, like a shock, <laughs> especially last year when he was still in juniors. Um, but now that he's raced the light formula, like the light world formulas and the, and the double A's and, and then now at the Rumble twice, it's this, yeah, the speeds are crazy. I know the first time when he hit one of those in field tires, he's like, Okay, now I know why you told me not to hit one of those tires. And I'm like, yeah, pretty much I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of our kids took some pretty good tumbles there. Um, but I think just over the course of the years, you just kind of get used to it. Um, but, you know, if you ever any of the kids that take a tumble there, it's, you know, we're just a big family. We always look over everybody and make sure everybody's okay. And we've had some scary incidences, but... Thankfully, you know, they got lots of protection, lots of safety gear, and they're for a reason, so. I, I know I'm always kind of scared just watching them because all the quarter midget drivers, they have that head lean going on, and, and you know, in the infield, they have the tractor tires. I'm always scared they're just going to hit them with their head. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, so Austin, you're, uh, I think you're in middle school now, right? Um, what, yeah. how is that like balancing, you know, um, school and racing? And uh, does, does one of those take precedent? Um, school, not so bad with racing. What? Just <laughs> um, it's middle school's a little harder this year. The beginning of middle school was a little easy, but once we got more into the school year, it's gotten a little harder. So do you have a, a favorite subject in school or anything that uh, you do the best at? Math. It's definitely math. Oh, good deal. I, I, I like math. I just didn't like history or science. So uh, <laughs> uh, anyways... Uh, a neat uh, feature a couple of weeks ago, we did the uh, ro uh, profile of the week and we had you featured and on there was probably one of the coolest pictures I've seen in a long time. And <laughs> I, I know a lot of people talk about that. You standing beside Rico Abreu uh, and I guess you did like a little interview with him. Uh, what was it like being in the same building racing with uh, Rico? Um, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Uh, kind of a little scared to talk to him. The being the first time to actually be that close to him. But but you were taller than him. <laughs> um, definitely. <laughs> um, I've never been around. Not to be mean or anything, but I've never been around a person that small that races a big car. He, yeah, he, he's quite the inspiration, and uh, he, he does do a, a great job with that. And I know talking to your uh, dad and mom, uh, the thing that the quarter midget kids, they kind of forget about me being mean and my procedures, but they, they, they just feel so cool being in the same building with Rico, Tony Stewart, Mike Fedorsik, uh, all the names, the Hamiltons, on and on and on, and being able to just jump from your pit area and go over and uh, be right beside them in the pit area. It's pretty cool. It, once you see like all those people, it's, it's kind of like a whole new world. It, it, it definitely is. Does it, does it ever get you nervous knowing that those guys are always going to be there watching, you know, at the Rumble? Yeah. It gets me real nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, uh, believe it or not, they do watch you guys uh, because with all the breaks in the action and uh, they go out there and they, they tell us a lot of great stories about what they've seen the quarter midgets and the go-karts doing out there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think it's like anything else. You've got to do your best because you don't know who's watching you. You know, there could be uh, somebody out there wanting to take you up to uh, the next level. For sure. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of guys there that, you know, have the capabilities of doing that. And I always think it's neat, you know, seeing Tony Stewart there, who's obviously one of my idols, 
you know, he's always in the pit, standing on that barrier, watching the cart races and, and the quarter midget races go on, you know, because there is that, that gap in the action between the midgets. So, Austin, I have to uh, ask you, uh, your mom and dad have gone 100% behind your racing career, and you travel quite a bit. Uh, so a lot of different uh, quarter midget club tracks that you go to. Uh, is there any one that maybe you feel you do the best at or that is maybe your favorite? Uh, Kalamazoo is my favorite, but I think Makachi is the track that I do best at. I went, I went over to Makachi and looked at it. It's in a, It's kind of a neat setting. You're kind of like in a park there and uh, you got the trees all around and everything and uh, a, a lot of uh, exciting racing there and uh, it's so family oriented uh, mom and dad can you uh, vouch for that as far as all the families get involved with uh, quarter midget racing yeah the the speaking of makachu that's one thing that pretty much all the families really like about that track in particular is the park setting and there's um, the creek and the water park and the playground and you know it's it's just and it, you're in it you're with your family you're with your race family so even if I usually don't know where my kids are they're in the water or in somebody's trailer but I know they're okay and that's just kind of like how every weekend is it's you know you're with family regardless of what track we're at. Ye you know, you touched on something there that I always, I, I get a kick out of this one. Uh, the parents, they get so involved, rightfully so, in what's happening on the racetrack and what's happening to their kid and stuff like that. And uh, sooner or later, you see the parents like in each other's face, uh, just screaming and yelling. And you look, there's the two kids that were involved. They're over in the playground having a good time. Uh, Rob, tell us about that. Have you ever been in that situation? Uh, I've never been in that situation. I'm usually pretty calm when it comes to stuff happening on the racetrack. Um, but it is kind of funny. You'll see these kids racing so hard, you know, and if something happens and they, you know, they wreck or get passed on the last lap or, or whatever, the, you know, they they get out of the car and they're giving each other high fives and they're laughing and then you turn around and the two dads are upset with each other. Um, I always thought that was kind of funny. I know we've got some really good friends that we've made um, over the last six years racing quarter midgets and our two families, our, our kids race each other so hard and so clean. It, it, it's, it's so enjoyable to watch and, between the two families and the two kids, they don't care who wins just because it's so much fun and so competitive with each other. You know, I wish we could keep that fun aspect in it, uh, but uh, it, 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 the heat of the moment and the adrenaline, it, it, it really definitely gets tough. And I, I think that's neat because I think a lot of that carries over to the rumble. You know, there's obviously no no trees or, uh, you know, creeks inside the building, but, but there is that family atmosphere that, you know, it's, it's they're just kind of there as a community, and, and it's uh, a, lot of, a lot of fellowship going on there. So, uh, Rob and Mary Jo, we, we talked to Austin, and we know how he got his start in racing. Uh, tell us a little bit about your guys' background. I don't know if guys is a word. Your guys' <laughs> background uh, in <laughs> auto racing, and uh, what brought you into introducing your son to quarter midget racing? Uh, when me and Mary Jo met, um, we both were on pit crews for some asphalt late model teams, uh, separate pit crews. I was originally from Michigan and she was here from central Ohio. Uh, and we actually met at a racetrack in Florida, um, back in 1999. Um, so we, both of us kind of came up with a little bit of a racing background. Um, and then when she was pregnant for Austin, I remember one day driving by a soccer field and she says, Oh, look at those people. I said, what are you talking about? And she goes, Oh, they're out there miserable in that hot out there in that field. It's hot out. <laughs> I'd rather go quarter midget racing. And I looked at her and I said, are you nuts? You know, when it's 95 degrees out on blacktop, it's 120 degrees, but whatever, if you want to go racing, we'll go racing. Here we are <laughs> 11 years later. 
So for those of you that are, are just tuning in tonight, we're with the uh, Gear family from Orient, Ohio, and uh, very involved in quarter midget racing. Uh, obviously, Austin is the focus of our interview, uh, an up-and-coming quarter midget racer. And then Dad, Rob, is the uh, president of the Buckeye Quarter Midget Racing Association, and I don't think they're ever going to let you resign. I think you're going to be the president oh. forever. <laughs> and then... Mary Jo, I don't know what your capacity is, but I know you're always there when we're setting up the track, and uh, you're kind of like with the moms getting the, the scoring tower ready and the registration room and everything else. So you guys are very, very uh, involved with quarter midget racing. Yep, we are there, and thankfully we have a great club. We got lots of great families, um, and, you know, we just definitely can't do it without all of them. I mean, you know, race day doesn't happen without all of our families. And I, we have a great, I think we have a great, great um, club yeah. in general. So that's, thank you to all of them. But yeah, it's, it's a long days. Um, definitely missing it though, actually. <laughs> missing it right now <laughs> on Saturday, oddly enough. Yeah, I could go for a 14 hour day in the hog barn. <laughs> So what's uh, what's the future for Austin? Does he have any plans for uh, you know? I think you guys mentioned you were working on light model teams, or? Well, what are your plans, Austin? Um, <laughs> what do you want to do? Um, uh, race a four ten sprint car. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> awesome. On dirt or on asphalt? Dirt. Very good. <laughs> Well, you know, Austin, uh, we, we talked a little bit about the Rumble, and you're there with Tony Stewart and uh, Rico and stuff like that, but it, it really doesn't stop there because the Winter Nationals that you guys do and participate in and actually put on in the Hog Barn, uh, you've got NASCAR guys with their kids. Uh, you've had the Labonis there, and I know Mark Martin had his kid in quarter midget and stuff like that. So, you know, they know that quarter midget racing is a good stepping stone and you get to race against those names is that pretty special yeah it really is it's fun racing against the kids that have parents that have been in nascar that's cool uh, you know i i'm just amazed at uh your winter nationals, Rob, uh, they come from, I don't know how many states and, uh, uh, you're right. It's like 14 hours and, uh, it's just nonstop racing. And I, I think we're all missing the, uh, fumes and, uh, the smell and the sights <laughs> and the sounds. <laughs> oh, fumes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I miss it. it. Indoors is a lot. I mean, it's borderline a national level race. Um, we host six of them every winter, and we get families come from Colorado, uh, New Jersey, all up and down the East Coast. We get North Carolina, Florida, uh, Alabama, all over the country will come and race because they know during the winter, that's the place to race. Uh, the level of competition that's in the building is insane. Um, and our kids, they you know, they get to learn from the level of competition, just the amount of stuff that they learn racing in that barn really carries over to racing outdoors. So I have to ask this, Kyle touched on it and it, it, it amazes me and maybe you can uh, fill in the stupid people like me. Uh, why do those kids lean so far out of the roll cage? I mean, literally that the whole upper body is leaning outside of the roll cage. What's the story behind that? Uh, left side weight, uh, to keep the car from flipping over. Uh, I know, well, as with uh, Fort Wayne, even indoors uh, at the hog barn, the track just gets so much grip in it that the kids have to lean to the left in order to keep the car from flipping over. But I do notice that the rumble, they're not leaning out quite as much. I think they're learning more. Uh, one of the dads told me once that, uh, sure, they don't like the, the, maybe the way that we run the show at the rumble, but our premise is that, you know, we're trying to bring you up to what 
outdoor racing is like as you move up the ranks. And uh, I, I think the kids are, are really using that to their advantage. Yeah, I would agree with that. Cool. So how, how hard is that? You know, obviously the rumble is, you know, pretty, pretty fundamentally different from, you know, any quarter midget track that you guys race at, you know, outdoors. How hard is that to kind of shift gears, you know, whether it's Austin, you know, your driving mentality or you guys setting up the car for them? Uh, as far as the car setup, we change, take a lot of stagger out of the car because you had the straightaways are so much longer. Most of our quarter midget tracks are really close to being a perfect circle um, or have very short straightaways. As to where the rumble, the straightaways are a lot longer. Um, so we, we change gear quite a bit, take some stagger out of the car, um, unlock the rear end where we can put an idler hub on the left rear. Um, and just kind of play around with some uh, tire compounds. Well, Austin, I think I have to ask you this. Uh, so many of your friends and uh, fellow racers from Makachi, uh, Xenia, London, and all those places, they don't necessarily come to the Rumble because maybe they've heard bad things about it being too fast and stuff like that. What would you tell any of your friends in racing to encourage them to come race against you at the Fort Wayne? Um, it's, it's, it's very fun. It, the, it's definitely very cool to meet all the uh, famous people in racing. And that's really all. And they're very then they're sissies because they know I'm going to beat them. <laughs> I think that uh, <laughs> little little coaching there. <laughs> uh, I I think the neat thing is and not taking anything away from the club racing, but it's a lot like the go karts in the summer. It's kind of a participant type thing. But you go to the Rumble Austin and you win a feature and you're out there on the front stretch with people like all around you cheering and everything like that. Uh, that, that that's got to make you feel like, pretty important. It really does. It also kind of makes you feel just a little scared because there's so many people around you Perfect. that you really don't know. Well, they definitely uh, cheering because they just saw a good race. You know, I uh, the quarter midgets, they... <laughs> I always hate that first day of practice with the quarter midgets, the quarter, the kids, especially the new ones. They don't know a couple things. One is that if you're coming towards the wall, that your quarter midget has a break and that you can let off. You don't have to hit the wall. Uh, and then they get, they go out there and then they stall the car. And, uh, you know, we just kind of look at each other and, that's why we let you guys back in the infield so that you can push <laughs> the quarter midgets <laughs> off. But uh, when it comes feature time, I'm telling you, I mean, I'm uh, from a go-kart background, and I love my go-karts, but there's been many a feature that the uh, quarter midgets have stolen the show. <laughs> yeah, they are a lot of fun to watch. I, it is. So, Rob, tell me, why do we have to push the quarter midgets off where the go-karts, you just pull – you know, the starter rope and go racing. Is there a different setup, like on the engine or something, or clutches, or what? what I, you have to help me on that. I'm stupid. Yeah, with a with a go kart, you have a clutch, so the engine can sit there and idle, and the cart doesn't move till the engine reaches a certain RPM and engages a clutch. Um, with the quarter midgets, were direct drive. Um, the engines all have a. a Typically, it's right around a six to one reduction gearbox on the side of the engine. And then there's a gear that the chain mount goes on that's it's, it's direct drive chain drive from the from that gear to the gear that's on the axle. So if the engine's not running, the car's not moving. And if the car's not moving, the engine's not running unless the chain pops off. I think Larry needs you to repeat that, but a lot slower this time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always tell everybody, my, my knowledge of engines uh, uh, is you get in the car and you turn the key. If it doesn't start, you call AAA. That's about as much as I know. 
Well, we're going to uh, wrap this up pretty shortly here. It's uh, unbelievable how quickly 23 minutes go by. And Austin, you're our final guest this year on the Rumble Mumble. And I, I can't think of a neater way of closing out this series than with the young generation, somebody 11 years old, uh, just wide-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to go racing. Yeah, it's, it's cool having, you know, some of the guests on here that are older and we look back at when they're younger, but, you know, you're living it right now. So it's kind of cool to see your perspective of, uh, of the rumble and your racing nowadays. Well, guys, we uh, wish you a lot of success. And uh, I think you're like me and everybody else. We cannot wait until the green flag drops uh, this season. Where, where's your first race or where do you plan on your first race this year? Uh, Nashville, maybe. Nashville or maybe North Carolina. In March. Mar uh, I think early April. March or April. Something wow. like that. That's awesome. Well, we wish you a lot of success. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we wish you a lot of success and uh, look forward to uh, next December when the quarter midgets and you guys come back up into the Rumble in Fort Wayne, presented by Jason Deach Trailer Sales and uh, get the opportunity to see uh, Austin uh, out there in front of those people getting scared as they cheer for you. <laughs> we'll be there. Yep. All right. So with that, Kyle, we'll wrap it up for this season. Yeah. Thanks to your family for uh, hopping on here. We look forward to uh, seeing you guys next year. Huge, huge shout out to Carl and Rico at Fatheads for allowing us to do this this year. And uh, we will see you in a few short months.